This is section 2.12, and we're going to be solving equations that require multiple steps. So I'm going to start off working through some of the easier ones and then work my way down to a few more difficult ones. And then the last two questions um, are just kind of weird with the way that their answers end up being. So let's look at question one. I have negative x plus 2 equals 15. I'm going to go ahead and move the 2 over by subtracting 2 on both sides. So I get negative x equals 13. And then my last move would be divide, to divide by negative 1 so that I no longer have the negative in front of the x. So my answer becomes x equals negative 13. All right, let's look at number 2. Number 2 is, again, a two-step question, just like number 1 was. I would start by moving the 17 so negative 91 minus 17 would be negative 108. And here I have negative 6 sevenths x. So my next step, I could divide both sides by negative 6 sevenths. And I can do this on my calculator if I need to. Negative 108 divided by negative 6 sevenths. And I should get an answer of positive 126. Okay, question seven requires even a few more steps. So the first thing I would do is distribute the five on that side and distribute the seven on this side. So I'm gonna simplify both sides before I start moving things across the equal sign. So I get five X plus 20 equals seven X minus 14. So my goal before I can do what I did in questions one and two is to get anything that has the variable x on one side and anything that has the constant term on the other side. So I think I'll move my 5x by subtracting it because it was positive, so I'm going to put a negative. And then on this side, I'll combine it with the 7x. So I'm going to get 20 equals 2x minus 14. And now it looks pretty much like question one. So I could add the 14 to both sides and I'll get 34 equals 2x. And then my last step, I'll divide by two. So in this case, x equals 17. Let's look at number 12, which is a little more difficult. It has more steps and it has some fractions. So just like in problem seven, what I'm gonna start with is simplifying each side of the equal sign. Now this side is as simplified as it gets, so I'm just gonna work on this. Negative 1 9th times x is negative 1 9th x. Negative 1 9th times negative 27 is a positive three. You could do that on your calculator if you need to. 1 3rd times x is 1 3rd x. 1 3rd times three is one equals x minus 17. So I'm going to continue working with simplifying this left side. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to add negative 1 ninth plus 1 third. And I'll get positive 2 ninths. So 2 ninths x and then 3 plus 1 is 4. So I combine these two like terms and then those two like terms equals x minus 17. I'm going to subtract 2 ninths x from both sides so that I can get all the x's on the same side. And I will end up with 4 on this side equals x minus 2 ninths, or 1 minus 2 ninths is 7 ninths x minus 17. Then I'm going to add 17 to both sides. So let me rewrite this um, right here. So 4 equals 7 ninths x minus 17. Plus 17 on both sides gives me 21 equals 7 ninths x. Then if I divide both sides by 7 ninths, I should get 27. 
So x equals 27. I think that's probably the most difficult problem on the assignment, just because you're combining fractions and you've got a whole bunch of stuff going on. So let's look at problem 13. It's similar to 12. It's a little bit easier because there aren't any fractions, but you'll notice something weird that happens when we get down towards the end. So I'm going to distribute my 9. So I get 9x plus 18 equals, and I'm going to distribute this 3. So 3 times 3x is 9x. 3 times 4 is 12 plus 6. Now I'm going to combine these two like terms so that I get the right side simplified. The left side is already simplified. 9x plus 18. So notice what I have here is the exact same thing on both sides. 9x plus 18 equals 9x plus 18. For some of you, you'll, you'll notice right at this point that it doesn't matter what you put in for x. The left and the right side will always be equal. So you could put any number in for x because you're going to multiply by 9 and then add 18, regardless of whether you're on the left or right. So this will always be equal for any number that you stick in for x. But if you don't quite see it yet, then go ahead and keep working. So now I've got 9x equals 9x. At this point, it should become a little bit easier to see. So let's say x was 0. 9 times 0 is 0. 9 times 0 is 0. Oh, that's true. What if x is 1? 9 times 1 is 9. 9 times 1 is 9. 9 equals 9. That's true. What if x was 10? I would have 90 equals 90. That's true. In other words, it doesn't matter what x is. The left side will always equal the right side regardless of what x is. So in this case, x is all real numbers. It could be any real number, and the left and the right will still equal because we have exactly the same thing on the left and right. So you would check the circle that says the solution is all real numbers. Okay, well, let's look at 14, which is the other example of what could happen. So all these other questions, we got a single number that made the equation work, right? There was just a single answer. And so we would put that in as a single solution. Then all, all of a sudden we get to question 13 and any number would make the left and the right equal. So now let's see what happens with question 14. So I'm gonna go ahead and distribute. So I get seven V plus seven minus 3v equals, distribute that, 4v plus 6 minus 13. I'm going to combine like terms on this side. 7v minus 3v is 4v plus 7. Here, 6 minus 13 is minus 7. So at this point, you might be able to recognize what's going on. You have 4v regardless. In this case, I'm going to add 7. In this case, I'm going to subtract 7. There's no number I could put in for v that's going to make this side equal that side. But we could keep going. Let's say, let's say we minus the 7, minus the 7. We get 4v equals 4v minus 14. So if I took a number and I multiplied it by 4, would that ever equal the same number multiplied by 4 and then minusing 14? So maybe you'll start to see it at this point. And the answer is no. There's no number I could put in for v that would cause these two sides to be equal. But what would my next move be? Let's say I subtract 4v from both sides. Now all of a sudden I get 0 equals negative 14, which is never true. You, you've lost the term that had the variable in it, and you have something that's not true. 0 is not equal to negative 14. So this would be no solution. So there are three types of results that you could get. You could get no solution, all real numbers, or a single number as a result. And that's it for this one.